Ramon Lull created a mental martial art that helps people remember better while also thinking at a higher level. To understand Lull's technique as fully as possible, let me introduce you to a few important details about this philosopher and his life, and then we'll focus on the memory wheel technique that he, I think, originated. Maybe there's memory wheels even deeper in history than Lull came up with, but Lull is particularly interesting because he spent a great deal of history being renowned for his belief that everything can be studied and remembered. Everything? Well, in the medieval and renaissance era, some people think this was possible. That said, Lull lived at a time where authors used exaggerated rhetoric. It's not necessarily the case that he meant you could understand everything and remember everything in the universe. More likely, he assumed that you would use the critical thinking capacities enabled by his memory wheel technique to focus solely on information that matters. Logic would dictate that we do so too, and Lull was all about logic. Now, if you like learning about historical figures who helped with memory and critical thinking, and you're new here, get subscribed, hit that thumbs up. This is Dr. Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com, and we're going deep into Ramon Lull and his memory wheels. Now, who was Ramon Lull? He was born in Palma, Spain in the year 1232. The exact accuracy of that date, I'm not sure is totally known, but one thing to consider about him is the environment around that general time. He would have been exposed to a diverse range of cultures and ideas. Mixing Christianity with the Islamic and Jewish traditions, Lull developed a unique perspective, one that helped shape the philosophical endeavors of Giordano Bruno, John Dee, Francis Bacon, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, and many others. And in books like Ramon Lull, From the Ars Magna to Artificial Intelligence, the authors credit Lull as a very early originator of modern computing. Mental computation is essentially what we do when using memory techniques, especially when we use memory wheels. Now, I don't think Lull came up with these ideas out of nowhere. And even though I haven't seen a memory wheel prior to his documents and different illustrations, I think there's some inspiration from Aristotle's comments on using the alphabet in a text we now usually call De Memoria. Now, Aristotle's understanding of using the alphabet as a mnemonic device is covered in a video on my YouTube channel called Aristotle's Nuclear Alphabet. And Aristotle, as I interpret it, thought the alphabet was explosive, especially when we weave it together with well-formed mnemonic images and memory palaces. And he talks about having basically different stations in your memory palace linked to a letter of the alphabet and then navigating that memory palace in different ways. But Lull, of course, is not just focused on memory improvement and not just on memory palaces. And this wheel idea allows you to rotate the alphabetical associations in your mind. He's developed a mental architecture that he wants not just to help you memorize things, but to communicate better, to resolve conflicts and comprehend better what it is that you memorize. At least, that's a charitable reading of Lull's intention, because there may be a dark side to this figure. There's a very interesting book called Mystics in Spite of Themselves by Robert Herrera. And Herrera agrees that Lull's memory wheels, or the art of combination, called Ars Combinatoria, is an ancient ancestor of our modern computers. But Herrera sees a less generous character in Lull. He sees someone who is at intellectual war with Averroism. Now, in brief terms, this was a thought system that was something between Aristotelianism and atheism. And although it's not clear if this battle of wits between Lull and Averroism actually happened, legend suggests that Lull was so insistent about his mystical beliefs that he was nearly stoned to death after trying to convert the people of Majorca. As Herrera puts it, Lull was a person unable to hold his missionary enthusiasm in check. He was compelled to preach, perhaps through some kind of bipolar disorder, and would expound and teach in poetic ways his scientific ideas, science at that time, his literary ideas, his philosophical ideas, and he wanted everything to be subordinated to what he called the art. And the art included memory techniques, and it included logical thinking, 
And Lull sincerely seemed to believe that all of these systems of thinking, the memory wheels, were given to him by God to restore humanity to a perfect state. So let's talk more about these memory wheels. Well, they combine the alphabet in imaginary circles in the mind, but some people actually put them onto paper, and there's many, many examples of memory wheels that you can rotate by putting different pieces of paper together, and they're fascinating to look at. In terms of the letters on the wheels, each letter represents either a complete word or a concept. And the basic idea is that these wheels help you remember concepts like the meaning of goodness. So you would call the letter B to mind beneficence and then unfold larger concepts related to that, perhaps by linking the letter on the memory wheel to a formal memory palace. And as the user revolves the alphabet in the mind, they can systematically reflect on various attributes of God, right? So according to Lull, by doing this, the user actually participates in acts of creation that heal the world. And I can see how that if he was having spiritual experiences that I think are known to happen when you use memory techniques a lot, he might have become a little bit of a fanatic that other people would take this on too. And, you know, he wanted people to preach the gospel using his particular ideas, and he would have them use memory wheels to spread his interpretation of Christianity. So, in order to avoid having to carry books around the world like Matteo Ricci did, using a memory wheel helped the evangelist of Lullianism refer, or Lullism you could call it, to the key concepts mentally. Because books were heavy and difficult to transport during Lull's time. And since people back then were as skeptical as they are now, it was important not only to deliver verbatim the scriptures, but also to be able to deliver reasonable arguments based on deep familiarity with doctrine, but also just to be able to spontaneously produce any kind of logical, structured, reasonable sounding argument that leads a listener to the desired conclusion. It's kind of like in the law where justice doesn't always prevail. Sometimes what prevails is the lawyer who can tell the better story. Now, in terms of why the memory wheel works in accordance with other ancient memory techniques, well, the geometrical structure of a wheel gives you a frame of reference. It's like thinking about a painting, and in that painting, maybe you remember there are some words. So when you refer to the painting, it's easier to recall those words compared to trying to just dig out words from the void of your mind. You have a point of reference. The historical record suggests that Lull was fairly successful at having his students evangelize using memory wheels. He was a big deal for a lot of history. But one student in particular, who we've talked about a lot on my channel, has, as far as I can tell, thought about the memory wheels deeper than anyone else. His name was Giordano Bruno. He wrote commentaries on Lull's philosophy and how he used memory wheels for memory and for critical thinking. Bruno also uses the wheels to develop a kind of self-help program. He gets into this in his books On the Shadows of the Ideas and The Seal of Seals. And these are some of the most important philosophy books available if you're interested in memory techniques and more. Now, with all that in mind, here are a couple ways to use memory wheels based on what I believe Lull is saying with a twist and some ideas from Bruno. Now, the first way you could consider using a memory wheel is as a memory palace. Now, a memory palace is essentially a mental copy of a building, and you use this imagined structure like a container for associations. So, you could have a memory wheel with the alphabet on it and use this as a means of finding your different memory palaces. So, you know, you could think of them as memory disks where you have saved your references. If you wanted to remember a word that starts with A, you would think, okay, well, A is approximately at the 12 o'clock position on my memory wheel. What is the memory palace that's associated with that? And you could then go into your A memory palace. Or you could just use A at 12 o'clock and imagine someone named Adam throwing an apple at a stallion to remember the word Apollonian, for example. Because apple would have that apple sound and then stallion would have that onion sound, more or less. And that would be at the 12 o'clock position. 
in your memory wheel. Then you would move on to the B and the C for a word that starts with B, a word that starts with C, etc. And you could easily memorize 26 words this way purely by referring to these letters arranged in space on your imaginary memory wheel or your memory disk where you're going to save different pieces of information. But again, it can also be a portal to other memory palaces. And one of the things that I did in the magnetic memory method is I realized I don't have to have these portals on a wheel. I can just use the alphabet. The alphabet is, in my mind, a linear line from A to Z. Again, it can also be a portal where the letter A leads you to another memory palace. Now, when I developed the magnetic memory method, I looked at this and I just thought, do I need to have this on a wheel? I could just use the alphabet, which is already an implied linear line. A, B, C, D, E, and so on, or Z, Y, X, W, V, U, T, S, R, Q, and so on, going backwards and forwards. And then you can just think about, you know, M, which I think is the 13th letter of the alphabet, mix in your number systems, and you're golden. You're ready to go. Do you really need a wheel? Well, it's up to you. It's your journey. And I've heard from people that they like to use the wheels as memory palaces. But there's another way to think about using them, which is to generate images. And it's a really wonderful thing that can help you because what you do is you just think of the letter and you have some kind of image that's related to the letter of the alphabet on the wheel. So A can be apple, B can be a battering, C can be a cookie, D can be a dog, etc. And if you want to, you can make it much more specific than that so that A is Adam West who played Batman, B is Brad Pitt, and so on. And this is a wonderful, wonderful way to just start to think about how you're going to generate associations without having to do it cold. You literally have a point of reference. You're able to think in your mind, associate and elaborate different images. And this just Really, really wonderful. And you know, Bruno talks about this. You can see this image from Bruno with a pig in the center. And if you want to add more ridiculous features to the pig to, to make whatever you're memorizing with the letter P more memorable, you could simply think of your memory wheel surrounding the pig. And then you go to letter A on the wheel that's inside the secondary wheel. And so now the pig is angry. And that's how you elaborate it. The scientists of memory call this elaborative encoding. You go to B, now your pig is bouncing. You go to C, the pig is cozying up. What are words that you might want to memorize that start with P where a pig could help? I don't know, maybe postgeheimnis in German. I would do it a little bit differently, but that's certainly a way that you could use wheels so that you help yourself make all of your images much more magnetic. You have a word that you want to memorize, you look at the first letter of the word, you then look at the wheel, you have a pig for P, then you elaborate it, you make it an angry pig, you make it a pig that's bouncing, and so forth. Another way to use memory wheels is critical thinking. And I think that this is focused on much less than it could be. So Lowell's original teaching in Ars Brevis asks you to string up the big questions on a wheel. And Bruno, in his commentaries, stresses just how powerful and important this is. Now, you're probably going to think, well, those are the most obvious questions in the world. But before you judge it, think to yourself, how often do I actually ask these questions? Who, where, what, when, why, how? These are very, very powerful questions to be asking frequently whenever you're considering something that someone's saying. So if you forget to do that, by having a memory wheel that you've spent some time investing your energy into, you may be much more likely to use that simple form of critical thinking. And you can go a little bit further for decision making. And I've talked about using the wrap technique on a memory wheel where you have W in the north position and R in, to the east and so on. A in the south, P in the west. Now wrap means widen your options, reality test, attain distance and prepare to fail. And when you're making a decision and you're trying to navigate what to do, by going through that simple mnemonic and referring to it on a wheel, you make sure to cover all your bases and you have so much better decisions as a result. So combining these techniques is just a fantastic way to smash through learning plateaus, to be able to create mnemonics faster, and 
to be able to make better decisions and think more critically by remembering questions to ask and remembering little decision parameters and decision metrics that give you a bounce and make it so much faster when you need to make a decision. And to make a decision not based on, you know, your really untrustable gut, but to be able to make it on rationality and logic. And that's what I think Lull ultimately wanted to see, is much more critical thinking, rationality, people using their powers of cognition. Even if he was a little bit extreme in his beliefs, he really contributed a lot to basically humans being able to cognize better. And again, some of the best of the best have credited him, including Leibniz. And Leibniz has come up on this channel before. He's really, really important. And as you can see just today, these are powerful tools and you can have many, many memory wheels. You can project memory wheels all over the place on the walls of your memory palaces. Heck, you can even project them on the moon. So if you haven't seen my previous video on using the moon as a memory palace, you might want to watch that next because it's going to help you take the memory wheels out into space and on every planet, not just the moon, and encourage and enable you to explore all kinds of connections.